tea roses with their huge flowers and wide selection of colors for the landscape. While beautiful, do not perform well in the landscape if proper planting and care are not performed. Hello, my name is Amy from Dayton Nursery in Norton, Ohio, and we have been growing and caring for these types of roses for almost 30 years. With our expert tips, you too can have a successful rose garden. A well-drained sunny site of five hours or more of sun per day is ideal. Poor soil can be improved with liberal amounts of compost or sweet peat at a one-to-one -one ratio. Once your site is selected, dig a hole at least twice the diameter of the root ball and one and a half times as deep. Full sun is of course necessary. Next, mix in the backfill so that a one-to-one -one ratio of sweet peat and good soil is achieved. Carefully remove the rose from its container, and if the root system seems tight, loosen the outer roots by slicing the root ball vertically with a sharp knife and then carefully spreading the roots out a little. Place the rose bush in the planting hole so that the bud union, the knob near the plant crown, is actually two inches below the original ground level. Then cover the root ball with the prepared backfill soil and firm the soil with your hands or foot. Important, be sure not to cover the bud union. Finally, water in well until the ground is saturated. Then water every other day for the first month. Water less if rainy weather persists. While removing spent flowers from a tea rose, cut off the flower stem above a set of leaflets containing five leaves. But you must cease deadheading in September to signal the rose to start shutting down for winter. Organic fertilizers such as Dr. Earth's Rose and Flower or Espoma's rose tone will be beneficial if applied just as the plant begins to grow in the spring, approximately April 1st and again around July 1st. These fertilizers should be worked into the soil around the drip line of the plant. After planting, it's recommended to apply about two inches of mulch. We recommend sweet pea. Mulching with sweet pea will provide nutrients and keep down weeds, retain moisture, and keep the roots cool. Insect and disease control are imperative to keep your new rose healthy and blooming. Black spot and mildew are the main rose threats. While not a severe problem with shrub roses or climbers, these two diseases are a plague, especially to hybrid teas, grandifloras, and floribundas, which will cause the rose to lose lots of foliage and shut down blooming. Therefore, these diseases must be prevented. Bicarb alternated with funginil once weekly will keep these diseases under control. Insects such as aphids, thrips, and spider mites can be contained by neem oil. Insecticidal soap used every other week would work also. You should not fertilize roses after September 1st so that the rose has time to finish hardening off for winter. Around Thanksgiving in Northern Ohio, cut the rose back to about two foot to prevent wind whipping. Cover the rose canes with about one foot of bark mulch to insulate the bud union from being killed when temperatures fall below 15 degrees. In late March, prune out all dead wood and prune the rose to shape. Start fertilizing the rose and begin your regimen of disease and insect protection about April 15th. Also at this time, you should gradually uncover the rose beginning about April 1st, then complete the uncovering by April 15th. While watering, be sure to thoroughly soak the soil. Plant roses in at least five to six hours of sun per day. Shade is not recommended. Apply two inches of mulch at planting time and at least once annually. Water using a watering wand is best. Also, do not apply water that has gone through a water softener. If the use of pesticides is necessary, apply at dusk when the bees are not present. Be sure to break up hard clay soil with the addition of sweet pea to the backfill. To keep the roses blooming well throughout the growing season, be sure to deadhead spent blooms. Alternate weekly sprays of bicarb and funginil will help to prevent diseases such as black spot and powdery mildew. We hope our tips and tricks will give you a healthy rose garden just full of blooms.